I am here today for research purposes. Today I'm doing a full face of the newest viral makeup that you might see showing up on your feed. And you're probably like, hmm, what are these? Are these actually good or are people hyping it up? That's what we're gonna test today. I have the hottest, most relevant makeup that I've been seeing online and we're going to be testing them today. So let's get into it. So let's start off with primer. We have this new one from One Size. This is the Secure the Glow Tacky Hydrating Primer. If you've been watching my videos, you know I've tested this before. This is so interesting looking. It has little bobas. Now the catch to this is, this is the first honestly hydrating product that One Size has in their line. And I'm gonna need this to wear with their line because their line is very, very drying on my dry skin. So I picked up this primer, I was so excited. First thing for the dry skin girls and it's quite nice. It has a thin feel on the skin and it does feel quite hydrating. If you let it set for a little bit, it will begin to get tacky. It does need a little bit of time, but no, I really like this and I love that it's a very hydrating product that still gives that tacky feel because I find that with some of these tacky primers that they aren't hydrating enough. This is one that I feel like gives really good hydration. It's not a replacement of moisturizer or anything, but it's a great little hydration boost before makeup application. Does this deserve to be viral? I would say so. It's a pretty good product. I'm enjoying it so far. Okay, let's talk base here. I have a couple different products that I was choosing between. Ultimately, what we're going to be testing today is this because this looks quite freaky so i can see why everybody's like what's going on with this this is the covergirl skin perfector essence hydra fresh tint now this is a direct play at what i just recently picked up from chanel the Le beige water fresh complexion touch now i've only used this once so i'm going to go side by side with this but I did want to give a special shout out to another very popular product that I'm seeing everywhere. Kosas just launched their BB Burst Tinted Gel Cream. If I had more than one face, I would be testing this in this video, but I want to give an update. I've only worn this once, so it still needs a little bit more playtime in my collection. However, this is one of the most beautiful no makeup makeup products. This does give very light coverage, but it just kind of evens everything out. This looks amazing on the skin without anything else. That's how non makeup y it looks. You can just put this on your face with nothing else and nothing looks out of play. It just looks like you did a really nice skincare routine in the morning and you're blessed naturally with nice even skin. So, so far I'm approving of this, but I will continue to update you guys. We're gonna focus on these today. I'm going to first start with the product that I am familiar with. Well, I guess as familiar as I can be. I've only used it once, but this is the Chanel. I have it in the shade B20. When you squirt it out, the balls kind of already start to burst, if you will, and become more of a pigment. Sorry, the sun is really shining today. I know it's hard for you guys to see. <sighs> Working with natural lighting can be so unpredictable sometimes, but I've had so many of you tell me that I need to try this foundation because it's amazing, and I've resisted, and I've resisted, and I've resisted, and I'm here to apologize to you because this really is such a beautiful product. It looks like it would be gimmicky, but it actually is exactly how it's described, a water fresh complexion touch. It really feels fresh and light on the skin. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous product. So let's see what the CoverGirl does now. And obviously there is a huge price difference here. So we'll see how familiar they are. I'm gonna go in with the shade number 20 light. Take a quick look at these balls next to each other though. You see that? Put it on my hand. Ooh. Okay, I feel like there's a little bit more wateriness to it compared to the Chanel. And by the way, I'm using the Rose Ink number three brush. And I'm going to kind of make sure the pigment is all blended in the back of my hand. I did clean off my brush in between. Okay, the shade's kind of light on me. <laughs> um, 
I should have gone with light medium, but it looks okay. Okay, I feel like this actually does have more pigment than the Chanel, but this definitely, the CoverGirl, is requiring more time and blending. You saw how the Chanel was already smooth with application, and I could just paint it on. This one I'm having to, like, work into my skin. Get some on the forehead. But for the price difference, I don't mind spending a little extra time. Honestly, this gave more coverage than I was expecting. I think this is a good alternative, but I'm telling you now, the Chanel side just looks so much better. Like, do you see how dry the CoverGirl side looks compared to Chanel? I did absolutely nothing different between the products. It's grabbing onto dryness, and it seems to be pilling with the one size. So you know what I'm gonna do? Maybe the CoverGirl just reacts to the one size. Let me wipe this off and apply it without the one size. I want to give it a fair chance, but the Chanel was definitely less picky about the base underneath. Okay, one size is wiped off. I'm gonna try the shade 30 of the CoverGirl in light medium. By the way, I bought the one size, I bought the Chanel, the CoverGirl was gifted. Okay, I like this shade better for me. Yeah, okay. Okay, this is already so much better. I think that the CoverGirl was not liking the one size primer. And this shade, if you're a shade match with me, is so much better. This is 30 light medium in the CoverGirl. This is really catching onto the dry patches on my nose though. Foundations in general lately, but the dryness on my nose have been struggling with it. Much better. Okay, come in closer. The Chanel side just looks better. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. You can see how much more smooth and hydrated it looks on my skin. There's a clear difference in catching onto the dry patches on my nose. The Chanel is better. However, if you just wanted a cool foundation with the balls, the CoverGirl is not looking bad. We'll see about wear time, but Chanel is definitely superior in this situation. But with the price difference, you can make the decision based on that. So that's my opinion on that. We'll see how these wear today. Which brings us to concealer. Now, the one most trendy product right now for concealer is the new Fenty Hydrating Concealer, but I feel like I've worn that enough, I've talked about it enough. A concealer that I'm still getting to know that some people are talking about is the Laura Mercier Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Concealer. Now, what they're talking about a lot right now is the Real Flawless Foundation, which went viral coincidentally. At the same time as this concealer. So we're gonna test the concealer today. I've had a couple experiences with this so far and I'm really, really liking it so far, but I've been wanting to test it with different powders and different bases. So I'm going to use the shade 1N1. Don't forget to get this little blue area right here, and then right here, and then right here. How I conceal though really does depend on my mood for the day. Sometimes I want a lot of concealer, sometimes I don't want too much. I'm gonna put a little bit of the concealer on my acne problems right here. I've been picking, I'm not gonna lie, been picking at my acne. This blends out really nice and very smooth. Now the reason, the theory behind applying concealer like this is because you want as minimal slash as thin of a layer of product right here in the center, and that's going to reduce it traveling into the fine lines increasing. Plus, most of the discoloration does happen right here, and then we use the concealer out here to brighten and lift the face. So here's how it's looking unset. Like I said, I've been enjoying this concealer. I don't think it has the smoothest finish, but it's been wearing really, really well for me. I just popped a little bit of the Kapari Lip Cloud on to hydrate my lips. They were looking dry. But anyways, I'm also just gonna pat on my eyelid a little bit. While the makeup sets down, I'm gonna quickly do my eyebrows. See, like the concealer has been sitting on set and it's really not going into my fine lines. 
This concealer wears so well. Okay, for bronzer, I don't have a new viral bronzer, but Dibs did send me a bronzer and I've been wanting to try Dibs. I see them all over online. So I'm going to use the shade No Shade. And there's also like one side has a bronzer and then the other side has a blush, which is really cool. But I do have a different blush that we're gonna mess around with today. I'm so excited to try Dibs out. The shade, gorgeous. I'm gonna use this dibs brush as well. So it looks like it's working out well, just drawing it on the face, but that's not normally how I prefer to apply my cream bronzer. I was just saying if it could do it and it can, and I'm just going to brush my brush right on top. And this is doing great with that. And this is a great color too. Love. Very easy to use. I like it a lot. I see why a lot of people are using it. And I'm just going to put a little bit of color down my nose. I feel like you can always see the true level of warmth once you get it on the nose and you can see that it's pretty warm. Not bothered by that though. And I'm using my Patrick Ta brush just to blend this in. And this is more so just to add a little bit of warmth in the center of the face rather than actually bronzing. I just find it so funny how very clearly on the cover girl side, my nose is a mess. <laughs> I have probably the most viral product of the year. And a lot of it just has to do with it being such a unique product. I have the cooling water jelly tints from Milk. And I did post a video on it, but it more so was just about the shock of receiving it and the shock of the product. It wasn't actually a review. Today, I actually... Like I want to review it. So we're gonna do that today to see if it's actually really good or not because I did notice like in some applications from when I was playing around with it, it worked really well. And then in others, it was really patchy. So we're going to see today. So what's super cool and unique about these, this is the one that I cut, which I also did in a TikTok if you want to see it. I just wanted to like feel it for the satisfaction. But, but look, it's a jelly consistency. And it's a really powerful stain. Like I'm just gonna put a little bit on my lips. Lip stain wise, this is fantastic, but it was the blush that I wasn't too sure about. And I noticed all four of these, they looked different on the lips, the stains. So that was really cool. Let me get a different color though, one that's not chopped up at the top. <laughs> so unnecessary. I think I'm going to do the shade Burst on my cheeks. And these will stain your fingers. They don't transfer or anything, but they stay. I saw that one of the best ways to apply these is with a brush. I haven't tried that yet, so I'm going to. I used the finger and I liked it, but it did get patchy when I went straight on. So let's see. I'm going to get some of my brush on there. That's like here. Okay. That didn't do much which honestly might be a good thing. That's pretty. Does it look weird? No, it didn't look patchy or anything on my cheeks. I would use a light hand though. Don't go too hard with it being a stain. It can just be difficult to work with. Okay, yeah, I would definitely use a brush. This is the most seamless application I've gotten out of this. I'm gonna demo my fingers really quickly so you can see. You gotta work lightning fast because it's a stain. So just go like that and then like that. Don't press too hard. It's good, I like this. Just be very careful and very fast. I would not go straight in with the actual product onto the cheek because that distributes too much color right away and you just don't have enough time to blend it out really. Let me be clear, these are not user-friendly products. They are not easy. You're buying these for the novelty, especially if you wanna use them as a blush. That brush application was the best I've seen with this. It's not as easy as a regular cream blush or a regular stick blush, that's for sure. But I will say like these as lip tints, amazing. If you're looking for a lip tint, I love these. Blush, not as great. I rate it like a five out of 10, but it gets the job done. If you use the right tools, and you work fast. But I did also have a second blush that I wanted to review today. This one is not really viral, but on my YouTube channel. You guys have been wanting to know my thoughts. This is the Natasha Denona Berry Pop 
Cheek Trio Blush and Highlighter Palette. I haven't gotten to use this yet. I don't know, a video hasn't popped up where I've been able to. So we're gonna use this today. I find it really interesting that it looks like all three of the products, at least both of the blushes here are cream. So let's mess around with that. So it's really interesting. There's a tinted glow cream base, but also a cream blush. So let's see how these look different. We're starting off with the tinted glow cream base. How pretty is that? Ooh, and it's quite pigmented. Ooh, how beautiful is that? I'm gonna use my BK Beauty. 109, just one of the best brushes ever. That's gonna give that even blend out. That's really pretty, it has some glow to it. Okay, I like that, but what's the difference with this cream blush? It has more of like a cream to powder feel, okay? More of like a satiny kind of finish. It's almost more closely related to, I would say, her cream to powder formulation and it has a lot more punch to it. Honestly, it's a little bit more difficult to work out. Hmm, interesting. The formulas on these are completely different. This one's gonna give you a glow. This one is a little bit more cream to powder kind of feel. A lot more vibrant on the cheek as well. Just gonna go lightly in, very careful. And then, because I think it'll look good, I'm gonna tap the brush in the base. I wanted to give that glow on the cheek. I know my blush looks crazy right now. <laughs> this is for review purposes. Didn't disrupt the foundation at all. Does give a really pretty berry flushed look to the cheek. Now I can't stand how bright it is. I'm just going in with my foundation sponge and we're just gonna press that in. Where's the actual brush I use? I'm gonna use the rose ink brush just to subdue it, but you got to see how it looked there. Very nice quality, but this is gonna be phenomenal for medium skin tones. On me, she's a bit bright for my preferences, but a really nice quality product, really pretty for winter looks, or I know the holidays are over, but this would have been a really pretty holiday kind of blush. Gives a similar color to the stain here. Let's see about this Dream Glow. Feels like a powder to me. Oh my gosh, look at that finish. I'm just gonna do it on the Natasha Denona side because I have another highlight to mess around with. But wait, okay, let's see. Okay, it was a lot prettier on my finger. The brush, it lost a little bit of the impact. That's still really beautiful. Ooh, so seamless looking. Nice, okay. I'm gonna powder my face really quickly, but you can see how the concealer's doing. It stays put, you guys. So I wore this the other day with my Huda Beauty powder, which is magical. And there was no creasing whatsoever, which has almost never happened to me before. So I was like, this concealer has to be good, but the Huda Beauty also played a big part in it because that is also a dream miracle product. But I'm starting to see that this concealer also played a big part in that product. Perfect under eye day. I'm going to use Laura Mercier powder to set it today. I haven't used this Laura Mercier powder with this Laura Mercier concealer, so hopefully the results will give. I'm imagining that they will. But I'm just getting the center of my face and the T zone area. Yeah, I want to put a little bit more of the ND highlight. That's stunning. Now the other highlight that I was seeing a lot is the Sephora Collection Luminizer. Now these are cool because they're affordable from Sephora since it's from Sephora Collection. I like the packaging on them. I ended up with Iced Pearl. This has like a pinky shift to it. I've used it before, it's very beautiful. Does this deserve to be viral? I would say probably not. It's just not as smooth as some of my favorite highlighters. It's pretty, but the Natasha Denona just melts onto the skin. You can't tell where the product starts and stops. I can kind of see where the product starts and stops with the Sephora collection, but it's still really nice. I'm not mad about it. The pinky pearly shift to it is also really pretty. Natasha Denona is better, but I'm not mad at this. Now against many of your wills. I have to do it. Okay, this is the most viral eyeshadow palette right now. This is the Skin by Kim Classic Matte Eyeshadow Palette. I used it to create this 
simple smoky brown look that we're going to be doing today. So I'm just gonna start off with this light shade right here. I'm going to press it underneath my brow bone. This palette is so overpriced for the packaging. This is cardboard packaging and it looks very, very cheap. I'm gonna go in with this shade next, but I have to say, you guys, the quality of this palette and these eyeshadows, really, really nice. Like the packaging does not represent the quality inside. These mattes are pigmented, but they're also buildable. Like they don't start off too pigmented, but you can build the pigment up. They blend really, really nice. They look different from one another, even though this looks like they wouldn't. I'm gonna use a flat brush and I'm using this shade all over the eyelid. More smoky, simple eyes like this are really popular right now. They kind of are grungy, but still really simple. I don't know if it's up yet, but I did a short comparing this to the Makeup by Mario matte palette and then the Patrick Ta palette. In my opinion, the Makeup by Mario has such a good selection of colors because there's a little bit more depth in the mattes. This one, there's like a lot of lighter mid-range tones, but we needed a depth kind of like in between this and this. There just isn't enough variety in my opinion comparing it to the Makeup by Mario. This is a clean brush that I'm just using to blend the edges. However, the quality of this is better than the Makeup by Mario, if you ask me. The Makeup by Mario just wasn't the best to blend and it was a little dry. These skin shadows are very creamy. It's more similar to the Patrick Ta palette. Next up, I'm taking a pencil brush into this shade right here. And I'm just going to stamp this across my lash line, not keeping it too low. But anyways, compared to the Patrick Ta palette, it's a more similar formula. I still prefer the Patrick Ta palette though. So Patrick Ta gets first place, but skin gets second place. It's a nice one to pick up if you are into the whole skin thing, but I'd recommend the Patrick Ta personally a little bit more. Using a blending brush just to blend that, we just want to keep that depth lower along the lash line here. Also gonna take this chocolatey brown shade along the lower lash line, keeping it nice and tight mostly because I wanna see the behavior of the concealer. And then I'm taking an even smaller pencil brush and I'm going into this shade right here, which is just a little bit deeper and I'm pressing it into my lash line. So this one I do want to keep nice and low, but you can see these browns look like they could have the potential to look close to one another, but you can see the difference of where I've pressed it and where I haven't. I ain't gonna lie, these shadows are very, very good quality. It's just a matter if you actually need these shades or not, you know? And then again, I'm just gonna take my blending brush just to kind of soften everything. I'm gonna take a small shader brush back into the lightest shade and I'm just gonna use that to brighten up the inner corner areas. And that's it, like this is such a simple, pretty, everyday friendly brown smoky eye. I hate the packaging, but the product was pretty well done. I would say the formula is reminiscent of a $50 eyeshadow palette. For a little bit of glimmer glimmer, I'm going back into the Sephora collection highlight. I'm just gonna pop this in here. Beautiful. I do have a first impressions of a mascara that's brand new. However, you guys know, don't go by my first impressions of mascaras because my lashes are so stick string and small. But L'Oreal did launch their Panorama mascara and I heard from Alan Face, who is one of Selena Gomez's makeup artists, he said this was really, really nice. So I had to try it. So it has a rubber applicator, which is really interesting how the bristles are big back here but are super duper tiny towards the top. Keep in mind, you're gonna have to subscribe to my channel to get my full review on this because I don't trust a mascara review on one try. This is not giving much length, but the separation it's giving, like the definition to my lashes is incredible. Okay, but definitely not exceeding in the length department but it is building a little bit now. Okay, that's one coat. I'm gonna leave that there. My lashes are already falling, but they do with every single mascara. So I did curl beforehand. Okay, coat one looks like this. 
Let me get some on the lower lashes. Lower lashes, it was a little bit difficult to get the brush on here just because I have such short lower lashes, but that's just a personal problem. Second coat being added, definitely adding a lot more volume this time. Wait, I love how much definition this mascara gives my lashes. I think I need this in a waterproof version though. I'm gonna let the mascara fully dry and then I'm gonna curl it and see how it behaves. But this gives great separation of lashes. We're gonna finish off with lips. Along with the eyeshadow palette, you know, Skin has launched some lip liners. You can see my makeup haul to see swatches and comparisons of all of the colors. I'm just gonna pop a color on. Let's see. Nude 5 lip liner is gonna be the winner today. And you can see the lip stain is still there, which is great. These have a pretty, not super smooth glide, but they are a drier formula, which I really like, but they still do easily apply. These lip liners don't set down, like think Pat McGrath, Charlotte Tilbury, how they have a creamy glide, but then they set and you can't move. These stay creamy on the lips, so the longevity isn't groundbreaking, but honestly it is a lot better than I thought it would be because when I wore these yesterday, it did greatly outlast the lipsticks. Not the longest lasting lip liner, but it does a decent job. So quality wise, I'm not mad at it, but price point wise for these, I am mad at it because these and the lipsticks are competitive with Charlotte Tilbury prices. In what world should she be allowed to have price points like that? Especially since KKW just wasn't that expensive compared to the brand now. She's really up to the prices. I'm debating on what lipstick I'm going for today. We'll do nude three. Now these lipsticks are interesting because they do have a matte formula, but it's a thin matte formula. You need to hydrate your lips, which I didn't before applying these because these do sink into every fine line nook and cranny, but they're very thin, so they don't necessarily feel drying and they blend in seamlessly with the lip liners. You don't need to manipulate anything, which I find very interesting. So I think it's because it's more of a sheer color. It's not super sheer, it's buildable, let me say that. But because it has more of a veil over the lips, it blends in beautifully with the lip liners. Like you can tell that these were formulated for each other. They work so well with one another. The only thing is exfoliate your lips beforehand. These will look good on lips with lip filler that just don't have as many fine lines. For me, it's not necessarily as flattering. It's not a bad formula, but again, these are the same prices as Charlotte Dilbury and they don't deserve to be, but these are okay. Like they definitely have a unique quality to them. That almost sheer blendable powdery finish that blends in seamlessly with lip liners. You can see, I don't love that. I will say though, the colors in this line, gorgeous, absolutely stunning. And then to finish off today's video, I want to top off my dry lips with some lip oils. And I've been hearing a lot of chatter about the Summer Fridays Dream Lip Oils. I have an opinion on these and I think it's an unpopular one. I'm going to use the shade Soft Mauve today. I feel like they took the term lip oil too literally here because these are too thin. They slip and slide all over my lips and they remove my lip makeup underneath. I was wearing an hourglass lip liner, which is a really good one that sets. This took the hourglass lip liner right off with it. And it's not even like plumping. I love how the like Dior lip oils and Clarins, they will smooth over every fine line. That's where I like to use the lip oils. This one doesn't even do that. You can literally see the fine lines on my lips still. It doesn't plump, it doesn't smooth. It's not as shiny as my favorites either. It's too thin, it moves around, it breaks up product underneath. Literally took lip oil to the extreme here. I'm not really a fan of it to be honest. Like it's not a bad product, but it is not my favorite lip oil at all. But some of you guys might like that it's more thin. I heard, read that some of you were into that. Me personally, I'm not. I think if you're a fan of the Dior and you're a fan of the Clarins, this isn't gonna touch that. You're not gonna be a big fan of it. I do feel a little bit of mintiness behind it, but I definitely don't think it was worthy of being viral. So those were my hot takes on the newest viral makeup. So here's what I think is worth 
the virality. I do really like this one size. I think it's a little odd that CoverGirl disagreed with it so much, but I think it's a nice, fun product. It's a great product for the line. The CoverGirl, it looks good, but it doesn't look as good as the Chanel. So take that for what it is. Hosas BB Burst, if you're looking for coverage, you won't love this, but it is amazing to give that fresh, skin carry no makeup makeup look because it does even out the skin a little bit it's stunning for what it is i'm really into these laura mercier concealers they just they aren't creasing on me it's amazing i see the hype of the dibs i do think that the milk is a little bit overhyped i am included in that because i was so excited in my shorts I made about it, but it's not a super easy to use product, but it is a kick butt lip stain. This one's not worth the hype, it's okay. I don't think the Natasha Denona is really worth the hype either for my skin tone. For medium skin tones, I think you'll like it. I hate to say it, I really like this skin palette. It is overpriced though, <laughs> just because of the packaging. This mascara, I'm very much enjoying. It still is drying down, so I can't curl it, but it definitely gave great definition. If they have a waterproof version of this, since my lashes are so straight down, I'd be interested. These are absolutely overpriced. The colors in the range, stunning, but for the formulas you get, absolutely overpriced. I'm saying it's one of those things that are overpriced, but I know I will be reaching for those because I love the colors so much. And these are absolutely overhyped as well. Boom, so there we have it. I hope you guys found this video helpful and I could crack those myths of some of these viral products that you've been seeing and helping you make your own decision on whether these would be worth it for you or not. Make sure you subscribe to my channel because a lot of these were first impressions today. So I will be updating you as I use these products more. There is a chance that my opinions could change, though they don't do it that very often. I will say that. But anyways, I hope you guys liked this video and found it helpful. Make sure you like it and subscribe to my channel, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.